Leo Peter Mamruth alitufundisha kindani sana kuhusiana na mambo ya visima. I love the preaching, I enjoyed it. Napenda nilipenda mahubiri, nilifurahia. Of course I watched online after uh, after my preaching in the course of the week. Niliona kwenye mtandao Juma lililopita and uh, I love the way someone described the preaching. Napenda jinsi mtu alieleza Maubiri. This person tells me when you see Mamruth does her hand like this you know a point is just about to come. Niambia kwamba ukiona Mamruth akifanya mkono hivi kuna point ambayo inatoka. And I did really bless God. Na kwa hakika nambariki Mungu. That was powerful the four wells. Ni ilikuwa ya nguvu sana. The first one was called what? Ya kwanza nini? The first one was called Esek which means there was contention, all right? Yes. And the people quarreled. The second one is called Sitna, and it means there was hatred. Then they went and did that one, Rehoboth, which means God has given us a room and now we can expand. And then the fourth one, Beersheba, which means, yes? What's the meaning of Beersheba? Yes, there was freshness. All right? Yeah. So now they would no longer need to look for, for more water because they have finally been given rest and they have been given a place where they can water their animals. So that freshness of life is what we are looking for. Kwa hivyo huo upya wa maisha ndio tunatafuta. And so last Sunday but one we said that there are several types of wells that we need to do. Kwa hivyo Jumapili ile nyingine tukasema kuna visima kadhaa ambazo tunafaa kuvichimbua. And we looked at number 1 prayer. Tulizungumzia ya kwanza maombi. And then we said that we got to pray all the time. Tukasema tunahitajika kuomba kila mara. And then we did the word of God. Tukazungumzia neno la Mungu. And we said that every one of us has got to meditate upon the word day and night. Wakasema kwamba kila mmoja wetu lazima atafakari juu ya neno usiku we na mchana. We took a bit of time with Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 and 9. Tulizungumzia Yoshua 1, 9 na 9. That this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. Kwamba kitabu cha Torati hakitaondoka kwenye kinywa changu. But you shall meditate upon it day and night. Nitatafakari juu yake usiku. So that you will be careful to do according to what is written in it. Only then shall you be prosperous. And have good success. And we finished in the book of Psalm 1 and verse 1 and 2. That blessed is the man. Kwamba heri mtu. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked? Ambaye hatembe kwa ushauri wenye no maugu. No stands by the way of sinners. Ama kutem, kusimama kwa njia no dhambi. No sits by the seats of the scornful. Ama kuketi katika viti vya nye dhambi. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Lakini furaha yake ni kwa sheria ya bwana. And on his law he meditates day and night. Na kwenye sheria utafakari usiku na mchana. Verse 2 that... That uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the waterside. Atakuwa kama mti kando ya mto. Which brings forth its fruit in season. Ambao unaza matunda kwa majira yake. And whose leaf also does not wither. Na matawi haya nyauki. And whatever he does. Chochote ya fanyacho. He shall prosper. Ata faulu. And we say that part of the reason why many people don't prosper is when they have no regard for the word of God. So we must be men and women of the word. Meditating upon the word. Taking delight in, its, uh, in, in the Lord. So that we do what God has commanded us to do. Today, allow me to pick three more areas that we need to redig our wells. And I told you I'm taking you slowly back to the old 
time religion nawaambia kwamba nawapeleka kidogo kwa dini ya kitambo one of the areas that is so neglected sehemu moja ambayo imepuuziliwa is the area of fellowship of believers ni sehemu ya ushirika ya wakristo let's go to the book of hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 twende katika kitabu cha waibrania kumi ishirini na nne Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 Wa Ibrania 10 verse 24 Mstari wa 24 The Bible tells us Bila inatuambia And let us consider how we may uh, huh, I've lost it 24 Let us consider how we uh, how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds and good works. Tuangaliane sisi kwa sisi na kuhimizana katika upendo na kazi nzuri. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together wala tusiache kukusanyika pamoja as is the manner of some kama ilivyo desturi ya wengine but exhorting one another bali tuonyane na kuzidi kufanya hivyo and so much more as you see the day approaching na zaidi kwa kadi tunavyoona siku ikikaribia let's do that in the niv version verse 25 mstari wa 25 not forsaking verse 25 the niv version let us not give up meeting together wala tusiache kukusanyika pamoja as some are in a habit of doing kama ilivyo desturi ya wengine i know we are living in a world that is fast moving najua tunaishi katika ulimwengu ambao unakasi but the fact that the world is fast moving lakini kwa sababu dunia inakasi is no reason enough sio sababu ya kutosha to forsake the meeting together of brethren kupuuza kukutana pamoja kwa ndugu wo unto us because we are living in the city ole wetu kwa sababu tunaishi mjini because living in the city is quite difficult kwa sababu kuishi mjini ni ngumu sana difficult in the sense that many of us do not have you know a relationship with the people around us ni kwa sababu wengi wetu hatuna uhusiano na watu walio tuzingira because you don't know who your neighbor is kwa sababu ujui jirani yako ni nani maybe you live next to a gangster pengine unaishi karibu na jambazi but you do not know ambaye haumjui i can tell you some of my neighbors i don't even know their names naweza nikakwambia majirani wengine siwajui majina i don't know what they do sijui wanafanya nini and i have no business na sina shughuli we only meet each other when opening and closing the gates tunakutana tukifunga na kufungua lango and so na kwa hivyo that is the lifestyle here hiyo ndiyo maisha but as much as that is a lifestyle lakini hata kama hiyo ni maisha that is for the people out there hiyo ni ya watu kule Because nje i want us to make a, a distinction a difference nataka tufanye tofauti between ourselves as believers kati yetu kama wa Kristo and the neighbors out there na majirani kule nje do you know you can live like that with your neighbors je una, unajua unaweza ishi na jirani but you cannot live like that with your fellow believers lakini hauwezi ishi hivi na mkristo mwenzako all believers are required by law wa Kristo wote wanahitajika kwa sheria And I told you I'm going to preach to you things that some people will say I am crazy. Tuambia nitafundisha vitu ambavyo watu wengine watasema ni wazimu. I know you live in the days of grace. Najua mnaishi siku za neema. And you have no business to do with the law. Na hauna shughuli na sheria. But I also told you that Jesus who gave you who saved you by grace. Niwaambia Yesu ambaye aliwaokoa kwa neema. Said that he did not come to abolish the law. Alisema hakukuja kuondoa sheria. In actual fact he came to strengthen it to reinforce it. Alikuja kuitia nguvu. So as much as we are living by grace, hata kama tunaishi kwa imani, we kwa have to fulfill the law. 
Lazima tutimize Torati. Sehemu ya Torati ni kwamba. Do not neglect the meeting together of brethren. Usipuuze kukutana kwa ndugu. Many people will tell me salvation is personal. Wengi watasema wokovu ni kibinafsi. I agree. Nakubaliana. Salvation is personal. Wokovu ni wa kibinafsi. But Christianity is not personal. Lakini Ukristo sio binafsi. Nitawapeleka polepole. Hadi mfike. You are saved as a person. Wewe umeokoka kama mtu binafsi. But when you are saved, lakini ukiokoka, you become a Christian. Unakuwa Mkristo. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, you become part of the body of Christ. Unakuwa sehemu ya mwili wa Kristo. The law of nature says, a sheria ya kiasili, that every part of the body needs the other part of the body. Kwamba kila kiungo cha mwili kinahitaji kile kingine and therefore in the, even in the spiritual na hata kwa mambo ya kiroho if you are part of the body of christ ikiwa wewe ni sehemu ya mwili wa kristo i to let you know you need every other member of the body of christ unahitaji kila mtu wa kila kiungo cha mwili wa kristo there is no christian hakuna mkristo yeyote that is supposed to live alone ambaye anapaswa kuishi peke yake no believer hakuna muaminio that is supposed to be individualistic anafaa kuwa na ubinafsi christianity is about fellowship ukristo ni juu ya ushirika it's about working together ni juu ya kutembea pamoja it's about supporting one another ni juu ya kusaidiana it's about standing together in unity ni juu ya kusimama kwa umoja Blessed be the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Not forsaking. Wala tusiache. The meeting together of brethren. Kukusanyika pamoja kwa mandugu. Even if you don't believe in the Old Testament. Hata kama uamini now you will tell me where the Hebrews is in Genesis. Taniambia kama Ibrania ni agano la kale. And by the way for the avoidance of doubt na kwa kosa kuwa na shaka I am not one of those who don't believe in the Old Testament I believe in 800% Mimi naamini agano la kale 100% Let my online watchers and viewers and all of those names that we call them hear this Na hata wale watazamaji wasikie I believe in the totality of the word of God Naamini kwa neno la Mungu kikamilifu Both what is written in the Old Testament and what is written in the New Testament Kilichoandikwa kwenye agano la kale na jipya And I have no fellowship with people who say that the Old Testament is does not make sense anymore Na sina ushirika na watu wanasema agano la kale halina maana But for their sake Lakini kwa ajili yao This is Hebrews hii ni wa Ibrania and the Lord requires us na sheria inatuhitaji not to forsake the meeting together of brethren tusipuuze kusanyiko la wakristo because believers these days have a habit kwa sababu wa kristo siku hizi wana tabia of saying that salvation is personal kusema kwamba wokovu ni binafsi so they don't care what goes on amongst the other brethren hawajalishwi kile ambacho kinaendelea na wengine they don't go for fellowship Hawaendi kwa ushirika. They don't go to church. Hawaendi kanisani. They claim to be saved. Wanasema wameokoka. But they stay home. Lakini wanabaki nyumbani. That is bad manners. Hiyo ni tabia mbaya. Praise the name of Jesus. Ah jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Today I'm not expecting a lot of amens. Ah siku ya leo sitaraji amina. I mean I mean I may not even force you to say an amen. Naweza kosa kulazimisha kusema amina. But I will be very honest with you. Lakini nitamwambia ukweli. If I don't see you in church. Ikiwa sikuoni kanisani. I have a problem with your salvation. Nina shida na wokovu. If I don't see you in fellowship. Nisipo kuona kwa ushirika. I have a question about your salvation. Niko na swali juu ya wokovu wako. And especially na hasa when it becomes inapokuwa This word here hili neno hapa when it becomes a habit inapokuwa desturi when it becomes a habit inapokuwa desturi because habits describe
describe who you are. Kwa sababu tabia inaeleza wewe ni mtu aina gani. Habits describe your character. Tabia ina uh, desturi inaeleza tabia. If you're this person who has no business with church Ikiwa wewe ni mtu hauna shughuli na kanisa. If you're this person who has no business with members of your church. Ikiwa wewe ni mtu hauna jambo lolote na washirika wa kanisa. I can assure you your salvation has a problem. Naweza nikakwambia wokovu wako una shida. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. It doesn't matter how many tele evangelists you listen to. Haijalishi unasikiza mahubiri katika runinga. It doesn't matter how many sermons you watch on YouTube. Haijalishi mahubiri ambayo unatazama kwa mtandao. Bible does not say that we we meet together with YouTube. It says meeting together of brethren. Biblia isemi kukutana katika mtandao lakini kutana kama wa Kristo. How do you meet with somebody who is in Australia? Je, utakutana vipi na mtu aliye Australia? And you claim to have fellowship with them. Unasema kwamba una ushirika nao. But I belong to the online church. Kwamba ni kanisa la mtandao. My friend, rafiki yangu. Can we criticize you? Je, tukukosoe? Bible says greet each other with a holy kiss. Leina sema kwamba Tell me how you greet somebody who is in Australia and you're in Kenya yeah. with the holy kiss. Niambie jinsi utamsalimu mtu kule Australia na busu takatifu. Church, kanisa, we are here on earth. Tuko hapa duniani. We are here to meet the expectation that God has on us. Tuko hapa kutimiza matarajio ambayo Mungu yuko naye kwetu. Part of that expectation. Tuwe katika hayo matarajio. Yes, we fellowship with one another. Ni ushirika na wengine. I give you my testimony. Nakupa ushuhuda. It builds you up. Inakujenga. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. You give me your testimony. Na nipa ushuhuda wako. It encourages me. Inanitia moyo. How do you claim to be in fellowship with people you don't even know? Je, utasema kwamba una ushirika na watu ambao hawajui? Followers of Reverend GG wala on Facebook wanamfuata mchungaji GG kwa mtandao. At that is your church. Kwamba hilo ni kanisa lako. People who like what are they called? They call them what? Those pages that we 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 we, we are told to like. People who like, you know, Pastor Reverend David Gedega wala ambao wanampenda mchungaji uh, Reverend Gidhiga. And then you go telling us that wewe ni mshirika wangu. Naenda ukisema kwamba wewe ni mshirika wangu. And I don't even know you by name. Na hata sikufahamu kwa jina. I don't even know where you stay. Sijui mahali ambapo unaishi. I don't even know where you live, where, what you do for a living. Sijui kile unafanya. I have never seen you. Sijawahi kuona. Hiyo ni uongo. Hiyo ni uongo. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Fellowship has got to do with us being together. Ushirika ni juu ya sisi kuwa pamoja. Sharing together. Kushiriki pamoja. That is why the book of Malachi says that they that loved one another, they that loved God. Bila inasema kwamba katika Malaki waliompenda Mungu. They spoke to one another. Walizungumziana. Wow, how are they speaking? Walikuwa wanazungumza kivipi? Walikuwa pamoja. Seated in a fellowship. Wameketi kwa ushirika. Speaking to one another. Wakinena na wengine. And God was listening. Na Mungu alikuwa anasikiza. Bible says their names were written in the book of remembrance. Bila inasema majina yao yakaandikwa kwenye kitabu cha kumbukumbu. Who do you speak with? Je, unazungumza na nani? Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Who do you fellowship with? Je, unaushirika na nani? Do not neglect the meeting together. Usipuuze kusanyiko. Many of us wengi wetu. And I told you I'm talking to people that I know. Mwambia kwamba nazungumzia watu ambao nawafahamu. Many of us take the meeting of brethren as secondary. Wengine wengi wetu wanachukulia kusanyiko la Wakristo kuwa jambo la pili. Many of you looking at me in this service. Wengi ambao wananitazama kwenye ibada hii. Come to church when you have nothing else to do. Na kuja kanisani wakati hauna lolote la kufanya. 
Shall we talk today? We said we are redigging the well. Tell you we are redigging the well. Let them me hear them in English. We are redigging the wells. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of you come to church. When you have nothing else to do. Provided the clothes have been washed. I guarantee you there are people seated in this service. Na kuhakishia kuna watu kansani. Maji kikuja Sunday asubuhi. Maji kuja asubuhi Jumapili. They will not come to church. Hawata kuja kansani. They will be busy cleaning their clothes. Watakuwa wanaosha nguo. Am I lying or talking the truth? Je, ni ukweli ama uongo? They will be busy fetching water. Watakuwa wanateka maji. And some of you have told me that. Wengine wameniambia hivyo. There's no secret anymore. Sio siri tena. That I didn't come to church because I was fetching water. Kwamba sikuja kanisani kwa sababu nilikuwa nateka maji. My question is, swali langu ni kwamba why didn't you fetch water? Kwa nini haukuchota maji? On that the morning. Alhamisi asubuhi. When the water came on that day. Wakati maji ilikuja. And you were required to go to industrial area. Na ulitajika kwenda industrial area. To work for Muhindi. Ukamfanyie Muhindi kazi. Why? Kwa nini? Why didn't you fetch water? Kwa nini haukutaka maji? When you were required to go to Ruaraka. Wakati ulihitaji kwenda Ruaraka. In that Muhindi place. I tell Muhindi I didn't come to work today because I was fetching water. Mwambie kwamba sikuja kazi kwa sababu nilikuwa nateka maji. But just because God cannot be seen with your eyes, lakini kwa sababu Mungu hawezi akaonekana na macho yako. You think you can change God? Nafikiria unaweza ukambadilisha Mungu. You can play around with God. Unaweza ukamchezea Mungu. And let him understand that you were fetching water that why you didn't come to serve him. Aelewe kwamba ulikuwa unachota maji kwa ndiposa haukuja kanisani. Tell your neighbor digging the wells. Mwambie jirani yako Some of you seated in this service Wengine mmeketi kwenye ibanda hii. As long as there is business to do, work. Mradi kuna biashara, kazi. You are nowhere to be seen in church. Hauonekani kanisani. How many of you can close down business? Wangapi wanaweza wakafunga biashara? To be in church. Wawe kanisani. And you see, najua we are not doing it the way some churches do it. Hatufanyi jinsi makanisa mengine yanafanya. Let me blow my own trumpet. Wacha nijivunie. I am not like those pastors who tell you to close down business for five days when there is five days conference. Mimi sio mchungaji nawaambia mfunge yeah. biashara siku tano wakati kuna kongamano la siku tano. You know there's some unreasonable churches Na where if there is a conference hiyo wiki hakuna kufanya kazi. Najua kuna kanisa kiwa na mkutano hiyo juma hakuna kazi. You come in the morning and all of you have to be here. Na wote mtakuwa hapa. You clean the church. Mnao safisha kanisa. After cleaning the church, baada ya kusafisha, you wipe the seats. Na panguza viti. And prepare lunch for pastor. Mtarishe mchungaji and chakula. And then do it as Mfanye maombi. Until 4 o'clock. Ahadi saa 10. Then you wait for the revival. No. Na ngojea mkutano. Halala. I only ask you to be here at 6 o'clock when we have a meeting. Nauliza muje saa 12 tukiwa na mkutano. But some of us lakini wengine wetu even close down for 2 hours. Hasagapi? Hawawezi funga kwa masaa mawili. Bili. Can't close down for 2 hours. Wezi wakafunga kazi masaa mawili just to go and fellowship. Ili wawe na ushirika. What does that mean? Je, inamaanisha nini? It means to you as a person Na maanisha kwako binafsi the fellowship of believers is not important. Kwamba ushirika wa so Kristo what are you muhimu. doing? Je, unafanya nini? Breaking the law of God. Unavunja sheria ya Mungu. That let us not grow weary, Kwa, neglect, for sick. Kwamba tusichoke the meeting together of brethren. Na kupuuza kusanyiko la wa Kristo. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu sifiwe. 2023 I place a demand on the table. Na leo naweka agizo. I place a demand on the table. 
Naeka gizo mezani. Any serious believer. Kila mkristo anaye I want to see you in church. Nataka kuona kansani. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. I want to see you in fellowship. Nataka kuona kwa ushirika. Wednesday one hour, one hour only, one hour lisali moja, one. Jumatano lisali moja tu. And I'm sure you've been chatting for more than an hour, one hour. Niko na hakika umekuwa ukizungumza zaidi ya You've been on TikTok be entertained by those nonsensical dancers. Mekuwa kwenye mtandao. For more than an hour. Zaidi ya lisali moja. I talked to somebody and he told me aki mimi siwezi lala kabla sijaingia TikTok. Ngumza na mtu akasema siwezi lala bila TikTok. No. Najua For how many hours do you do TikTok? Je, unafanya TikTok kwa masaa mangapi? <laughs> how many hours do you do TikTok? Unafanya TikTok masaa mangapi? Just some guys dancing to other people's songs. Watu huh? wengine wakicheza nyimbo za watu wengine. Swinging their hips and their waists. Wakicheza na ku, uh, making ridiculous jokes. Wakifanya mzaha. And you can do that until 11 o'clock in the night. Naweza angalia hadi usiku But satana. one hour of fellowship. Lakini lisani moja la ushirika. Tell you never 60 minutes. Mwambie jirani yako dakika 60. I didn't hear you tell you never 60 minutes. Mwambie jirani yako dakika 60. Just to come and encourage one another. Kuja tu kutiana moyo. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. If you're going to become what God wants you to be. Ikiwa utakuwa kile Mungu angetaka uwe. Part of the demand be in fellowship, constant fellowship with one another. Agizo ni kwamba kuwa kwenye ushirika mara kwa mara na wengine. Let me ask you, when is the last time you give somebody your personal testimony? Testimony. Oh. How many people have a testimony here? Wangapi wana ushuda hapa? Hands up. I want to see people with a testimony. Nataka kuona watu wenye ushuda. Kevin, do you, do you, do you, do you have a testimony? <laughs> Anybody born again has a testimony? Yoyot, How many? Yoyota leo koka na ushuda. Senior, where is your testimony? Now, when is the last time you shared that testimony of the saving grace of Jesus Christ with your neighbor? Jeni mara gani ya mwisho ulishiriki uo ushuda na jirani yako? Can I be very daring and ask how many people have shared their personal testimony with a neighbor this week? Wacha, with another person. Wacha. Uka muambia, ni miokoka, yesu ni buwana, amen ilida, amen hivadi, ni naenda vikuni kwa imani na matendo. Hands up. Niliwambia leo hamta hamta hamta. So kwa hii kanisa yote ni mtu moja. Wawili. Hakuna mwingine? Mimi nimepeana I think kila siku. Yeah? I am almost sure. I am I'm actually sure I've given my testimony to somebody every day. Mepeana ushuhuda wangu kwa name of Jesus. kila siku. Amen. Ushuhuda ilienda wapi? Ushuhuda ilienda wapi? Because that's the essence of fellowship. Sababu hiyo ndiyo maana ya ushirika. Encouraging one another. Kutiana moyo. Telling each other that we are still together in the same journey. Kuambiana kwamba tuko pamoja kwenye safari. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. You see, we have to go back to those old days. Najua tarudi siku za zama. Where you met with someone. Ulikutana na mtu. Na umetumwa kwa duka. Metumwa dukani. And because you are born again. Na kwa sababu meokoka. Na alia okoka, alia na mwana ana ushuhuda. Alia na mwana ana ushuhuda. Before I ask you for the testimony, you better give it to me very fast. Kabla kuliza unanipa So kwa that I allow you to go to the shop. Ili nikubalisha uwe kwa duka. Because there is no way I will meet you and pass you without you giving my testimony. Kwa sababu sita kutana na wewe bila kukupa ushuhuda wangu. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hii ni gumu eh? <laughs> Bwana Yesu atukuzwe. Amen. Let me tell you church. Wacha niwaambie kanisa. Fellowshiping is part of Christian discipline. Ushirika ni sehemu ya nidhamu ya kanisa. Let me take you back there. Wacha niwarudishe nyuma. Look at the book of Acts chapter 2. Matendo ya mitume sura ya pili. The book of Acts chapter 2. Matendo ya mitume 
Mlango wa pili. Are you there verse number 42? Mstari wa 42. This is what they say. They devoted themselves Even to the apostles teaching. Wakawa wakidumu katika mafundisho ya mitume. And to the fellowship. Na katika ushirika. To breaking of bread and to prayer. Na katika kumega mkate na katika kusali. Now these are the apostles. Hawa ni mitume. They devoted themselves. Wali jitolea. What is devotion? Kujitole. To devote. To devote. Kujitolea. It is kujito. They gave themselves fully. Wali jitolea kikamilifu. To the teachings. Kwa mafundisho. And to fellowship. Ushirika. That means they were literally going to the places of their meeting. Hiyo inamanisha walikuwa wanaenda mahali pa kukutana. And I even told you about John, Peter and John. Pia ni wazungumzia juu ya Petro na Yohana. Who every day at 3 o'clock they, they were on their way to church. Kila siku saa 9 walikuwa naenda katika hekalu. And that is why they healed the crippled man. Ndipo sa wakaponya yule mlemavu. I can tell you the truth you ah. if they were not going to the church they would not have healed the cripple. Naweza nikamwambia ukweli kama wangekuwa naenda kwenye kanisa hawange mponya yule Mlemavu. Let me tell you the truth. Church. Wacha, kweli wacha, kwanza, wacha kwanza nitulie kidogo. Let me tell you. Wacha Do you know some of you are miracle workers? Najua wengine wenu ni watendaji miujiza. Miracle workers. Watenda miujiza. Some of you seated here can raise the dead. Walio kete hapa mnaweza mkafufua mtu alie kufa. Some of you here are healers. Wengine hapa mnaweza mkaponya. They are the ones that Jesus gave power to heal the sick and to drive out demons. Ni wale Yesu alipatia nguvu ya kuponya magonjwa na kutoa mapepo. But you know why you don't do those things? Lakini unajua sababu gani haufanyi hayo yote? Because of the places that you are. Kwa sababu ya mahali ambapo upo. Wrong placement. Mahali ambapo si sawa. Sasa kama kama wale watu wa bomu naongea na wao ni mshenetu udaku. Inaitwa udaku. Inaitwa ubea ama udaku. Umbea. Ubea. Ubea peke yake. Umbea yeah? kila wakati. When will you remove healing? Je, utatoa uponyaji lini? When will you remove anointing? Utatoa upako lini? You want to remove ubea? Unatoa umbea tu. Huh? Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Some of you your best friends are drunkards. Walevi. Wengine wenu marafiki yep. ni walevi. Who is your best friend? Mlevi. Rafiki yako ni nani? Mlevi. Kimlevi. The only thing that he can send you is a bottle of Tasca. E kila anaweza akakutuma a tu. Of a bottle of Tasca. Ni picha ya pombe. I most likely you have it in your phone right now in church. Na pengine uko nayo kwenye simu kansani. Yaani mpaka simu yako haijaokoka. Hadi simu haijaokoka. Huh? Walevi. Walevi. Until when you come to church you're feeling defiled already. Na ukija kansani unahisi mchafu. When you talk you talk ulevi. Kizungumza unazungumza ulevi. And because you have nothing to say kazi yako ni kuamini tu, ni kuamini ama ni kuitikia. Wetekia. Ni kuitikia tu eh. Na kwa mm. mlikunywa eh. Tulilala kwa club eh. Mm. Ah. Mm. Yaani you look that foolish. I'm Una... sorry. Today's gospel is hard. Kuna kama mjinga hivyo kuitikia tu. Walevi. Mlevi. Some of the people you walk with are fornicators, adulterers. The only stories they give you is how many mipangos they have. Hadithi ambao wanakupa ni mipango walio nae. Wewe kanisa ya maina kageni? Eh, I said wewe kanisa ya maina kageni. Unajua shirika wa maina kageni? I have never seen such members. Sijai yona wa shirika kama hao. All they do is report to my nakageni how many mipangos they have. Kile wanafanya ni kumuambia mipango How much extra marital sex they have done. Ngono ambaya wamefanya. Shame on you. Aibu kwako. You know. Najua. Because those are the things that they talk. 
Hayo ndiyo mambo ambayo wanazungumza. And then you because you are saved you are left there wondering guy do I do it do I not? Na wewe unaacho hapo ukishangaa nifanye yani you put yourself into such a temptation. Unajiweka kwenye majaribu. You wondering do I do I not? Unashangaa je nifanye nisifanye? Hmm? Ati mpango. Mpango. Hata sina bibi naezaje kuwa na mpango na sina bibi? How how you know you even confused na hata unachanganyikiwa because of the people you keep kwa sababu ya marafiki ulio nao instead of looking for people that have faith like you badala ya kutafuta watu wenye imani kama wewe ati unachelewa kwenda fellowship ukisikiliza maina kageni unachelewa kuja kanisani ukisikiliza kageni and i have no problem with my nakagan he's doing his business ah sina shida na my nakagan i have a problem with you nina shida na wewe praise the name of jesus jina la yesu lisifiwe do you understand je unaelewa are we together je tuko pamoja kanisa can you choose your friends who are going to influence you in the way of faith Uchague marafiki ambao watakuadhiri kwa njia ya imani. Yes. Ndio. Choose look for people that are going to influence you in the way of faith. Tafuta watu ambao watakuadhiri kwa njia ya imani. Not people that will teach you the wrong doctrine. Sio watu watakufundisha maadili potovu. They will teach you how to drink hiding. Watakufundisha jinsi ya kujificha. They will teach you how to to fornicate hiding watakufundisha kufanya usharati blessed be the name of jesus christ jina la yesu kristo libarikiwe the apostles committed themselves let's go back to that scripture mitume wakajitolea to the teaching of the word and kwa, to fellowship kwa mafundisho ya neno na pia ushirika and then the bible says to the breaking of bread and prayer let's go to verse 43 Blay nasema kumega mkate na pia maombi. Now everybody was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Na kila mtu akajazwa na miujiza na ishara nyingi zikatendwa na mitume. Why were the apostles doing miraculous? Kwa nini mitume wakao wanatenda miujiza? Simple rahisi they committed themselves to the word of god to teachings walijitolea kwa neno la mungu kwa mafundisho they committed themselves to prayer walijitolea pia kwa maombi and they committed themselves to fellowship na pia wakajitolea kwa ushirika as they were fellowshiping together walipokuwa wanashiriki pamoja they were building each other's faith walikuwa wanajenga imani ya kila mtu that is why peter and john would dare look at a cripple and tell him rise up and walk Diposa Yohana na Petero wangemwangalia mlemavu anamwambia simama tembea. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu libarikiwe. Hakuna, Hakuna kingine. It is about them being united in fellowship, the unity of believers. Ni juu ya hao kuwa na umoja katika ushirika, umoja wa Wakristo. One of our favorite Psalm 133. Let's go there quickly. Injili ambayo naipenda Zaburi Psalm 133 133 One of the shortest Psalms Zaburi fupi It sana. says how good and pleasant it is for brothers or for brethren to dwell together in unity Nasema jinsi ilivyo nzuri ndugu na Wakristo kuketi pamoja katika umoja It is like precious oil ni kama mafuta yenye thamani upon the head ambayo imemwagwa juu ya kichwa down on the beard inatiririka kwenye ndevu running down to Aaron's beard inatiririka kwenye kidevu cha Enon down upon the collars of his robes cha katika nguo yake kanzu it is as if the dew of mount hamon ni kama umande wa mlima kamili we are falling on mount zion ambao unatirika kwa mlima za yudi. For there the Lord bestows his blessings even life forevermore. Na hapo ndipo Mungu anaweka baraka zake na uhai ndugu. When 
brethren dwell together in fellowship. Wakati ndugu wako pamoja kwa ushirika. It becomes like precious oil running upon the head. Inakuwa kama mafuta yenye dhamani juu ya kichwa. To the beard. Hadi kwenye kidevu. To the collars and the skirts and the and the, 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 the skirts of the robe of Aaron. Hadi kwenye kanzu ya Aaroni. There is where God commands his blessing. Hapo ndipo Mungu anaamrisha baraka zake. Ask your neighbor why do you sky fellowship? Uliza jirani yako kwa nini unahepa ushirika? Okay, if you are not talking I'm not talking. Ikiwa mzungumzi sungumzi. Ask your neighbor why do you sky fellowship? Let me ask you. Wacha niwaulize. Do you have two three people that you're in constant fellowship with? Je, una watu wawili watatu ambao mara kwa mara mko katika ushirika? That person that you know when I am feeling low in the spirit. Yule mtu ambaye unajua nikihisi chini kiroho. And I call them. Na niwapigie simu. I am guaranteed my spirit will be lifted. Nina hakika kwamba roho yangu itainuliwa. Do you have such Je uko na kama hao? Do you have two three people? Je una watu wawili watatu that are constantly checking on you. Ambao mara ya mara mara kwa mara wanakutafuta. Are you fine? Are you okay? Are you uko sawa? Do you have two three people? Je una watu wawili watatu that when you feel like you're becoming messy Ukihisi ni kama uko umechanganyikiwa. Am I the only one who feels messy sometimes? Je, ni mimi ambaye nahisi hivyo tu? Yeah? Najua pengine mimi Praise God. There are people who feel messy sometimes like I do. Je, kuna watu wanahisi jinsi wanahisi. You quickly tell them today I'm feeling like I'm off balance. I don't even feel like I am saved anyway. Naambia leo hata sijielewi sijui kama hata nimeokoka. And then they have some sense in you that salvation is not about feelings because ikai kwa mwili inakaa kwa roho. So you're still born again. Kwa hivyo anakuambia kwamba bado umeokoka. Do you have such? Je, uko na kama hao? That is what I'm calling fellowship of believers. Hiyo ndiyo ushirika wa Wakristo. Who are you accountable to? Je, unajukumika kwa nani? Who is your close ally? Je, rafiki wako wa karibu ni nani? Who do you share your secrets with? Je, unashiriki siri zako na nani? Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Do you walk with people that add value to your life or people that don't add no value? Je, unatembea na watu ambao wanaboresha maisha yako ama hawaboreshi maisha yako? Besides Pastor Gigi kando ya mchungaji because you see me am here by assignment kwa sababu niko hapa kikazi i am a man on an assignment niko hapa kwa kikazi i am answerable to all of you i am your priest ninawajibika kwenyu wote but in your peer relationships lakini katika uhusiano wako when is the last time you invited somebody for a cup of coffee just to fellowship with them je ni mara gani ya mwisho ulimwalika mtu kwa kahawa kwa and ushirika and find out how they are doing na kuwauliza wanaendelea vipi. And to encourage them that God still cares. Na kuatia moyo kwamba Mungu anawajali. Oh, they encourage you that God is still in control. Wanakutia moyo pia kwamba Mungu anakujali. The apostles were constantly in fellowship. Mitume waliendelea katika ushirika. Let me try to finish. Wacha nimalizie. Do you know Je unajua the secret behind the apostles working out signs miracles and wonders uh, siri ya mitume kufanya miujiza ishara na mambo ya ajabu was to a large extent ilikuwa kwa sababu as a result of fellowship kama matokeo ya ushirika show me any that were doing miracles nyonyesho yote ambayo alitenda miujiza most of the times they were never alone wakati mwingi hawakuwa peke yao believe me you niamini most of the times they were never alone wakati mwingi and that is why even when jesus sent them ndiposa yesu alipowatuma he sent them wagapi wagapi aliwatuma fellowship wawili katika ushirika he sent them in twos 
Liwatuma wawili wawili. That's why we find Paul and Silas. Diposa unaona Paulo na Sila. They are being put together in prison. Wanawekwa kwenye gereza pamoja. Peter and John. Petero na Yohana. They are together. Wako pamoja. The two the two apostles disciples that were going to Emmaus were called who? One of them was called Cleopas. Cleopas. The other one was called who? I've forgotten the other name. Wale wanafunzi wawili wale walio kuwa naenda Emmaus. But my question is why don't miracles happen anymore? Swali langu ni kwamba kwa nini siku hizi miujiza haitendeki? Is it true that God has run out of miracles church? Je, ni kwamba Mungu ameishiwa na miujiza kanisa? I told you this year I will preach to you a gospel that will provoke you to think and reason and think again until your faith is provoked to action. Waambia mwaka huu nitahubiria injili ambayo itafanya mfikiria hadi imani yenu inuke kwa matendo. Is it true that God cannot raise a cripple from a wheelchair and they walk in one of our services? Je, ni kwamba Mungu hawezi akainua mlemavu kutoka kwenye kiti chake na atembee katika ibada? And me with my own eyes I have seen it happen. Na mimi kwa macho yangu nimeona ikitendeka. In a village called Morinduko in Molo. Kijiji pale Morinduko kule Molo. I have seen a cripple walk. Nimeona mlemavu akitembea. With my own eyes. Kwa macho yangu. I held his hand. Nikamshika mkono. I lifted him up. Nikamuinua. And there was a rattling noise in his legs. Kulikuwa na sauti ya mifupa. And the legs stretched. Na migui kanyoka. This man who has never walked, I saw him walk with my own ambaye hakuwahi tembea nikamuona akitembea kwa macho yangu. With my own eyes I have seen blind eyes see. Nimeona kwa macho yangu vipofu yeah. wakiona. We played we prayed for a blind boy in India with Pastor Victor. Tuliombea kijana kipofu kule India na mchungaji Victor. And the eyes got opened. Na macho yakafunguliwa. Yakaona. Immediately they, they, they told us that besides this one we even have somebody else in hospital who they have said he has multiple organ failure he's about to die. Baadaye wakatuambia kuna mwingine hospitali viungo vyake vya mwili vimedhoofika yuko kali And we called him back to life. Na tukamrejesha kwa uhai. In the hospital. Pale hospitalini. That one we did not even go where he was. Hatukuenda mahali alipokuwa. We honestly said we send the word. Tulisema tuna Maneno. And immediately all the organs that had failed resurrected. Na punde viungo vyote vikafufuka. The following morning he was discharged. Asubuhi iliyofuatia akatoka hospitalini. What are you telling me? Je, unaniambia nini? With my own eyes. Na macho yangu. We dedicated a baby. Tulimwombea mtoto. From a girl in one of the churches in India. Kamschana katika kanisa moja kule she India. She had been married and barren for 8 years. Likuwa ameolewa na kawa tasa ya kanane. Next year a time like this. Tukamwambia mwaka ujao wakati kama huu. She will have a baby. Utapata mtoto. And we prayed for her she conceived in less than a month. Tulimwombea akapata ujauzito kwa mwezi mmoja. When we went back to India we dedicated the baby. Tuliporudi India tukamwambia mtoto. You, are you telling me miracles are finished in heaven? Je, ni waulize miujiza imeisha mbinguni? Store ya mbinguni imeisha miujiza. Jesto ya mbinguni imeisha miujiza? No. La. But where is the power to do miracles? Lakini nguvu ya miujiza iko wapi? Yet you're supposed to be a miracle worker. Nafaa kuwa mtenda miujiza. Because miracles are supposed to be worked out by members. Kwa sababu miujiza inafaa kufanywa na washirika. In fact the work of working out miracles is not for pastors, it's not for apostles, it is for members. Kazi ya miujiza sio ya mitume ama wachungaji ni ya washirika. You're supposed to be going healing every sick person. Unafaa kwenda ukiponya kila mtu mgonjwa. Delivering every demon possessed person. Ukikomboa walio pagawa na mapepo. Opening the blind eyes. Ukifungua macho yaliyofungika. But what happens? Nini mafanyika? Where is the power? Je, nguvu ziko wapi? Because we have neglected the meeting together of brethren in fellowship. Kwa sababu tumepuuza mikusanyiko ya Wakristo katika ushirika. As we prepare the church. Tunapoandaa kanisa. For the next wave of revival kwa ufufuo ujao because god is ushering the church into the next wave of revival kwa sababu mungu anaingiza kanisa katika ufufuo mwingine we must go back to fellowship lazima turudie ushirika where every 
day I am in the business of looking for you that we can fellowship together. Kwamba kila siku nakutafuta ili tushiriki pamoja. I'm looking for you so that we can pray together. Na kutafuta ili tuombe pamoja. I'm looking for you so that we can study the word God together. Na kutafuta ili tukajifunze neno la Mungu. And you looking for me so that we can just get a moment and sing together. Unanitafuta ili tukawe na wakati wa kuimba pamoja. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu libarikiwe. But not neglecting the fellowship. Lakini bila kupuuza ushirika. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. But I finished by going back where I started. Namalizia kwa kurejea mahali ambapo nilianzia. We are living in a fast moving world where everybody is so individualistic. Tunaishi kwenye ulimwengu wa kasi kila mtu ana ubinafsi. It's all about me myself and I. Ni mimi tu na mimi. It's about my business. Do ya biashara zangu. It's about my work. Do ya kazi zangu. It's about my family. Do ya familia yangu. It's about my my education. Do ya masomo yangu. I have nothing to do with anybody else. Sina shughuli na mtu mwingine yoyote. And where there is no unity. Na mahali hakuna umoja. In other words where there is no fellowship. Kwa maneno mengine pasipo ushirika. Then God does not command his blessing. Mungu hataamrisha baraka zake. To some of us. Kwa wengine wetu. Our works are our gods. Kazi zetu ni dhahabu. We are busy looking for money. Tuko na shughuli ya kutafuta pesa. Pesa. Busy looking for money. Tunashughulika kutafuta pesa. Busy looking for money. Tunashughulika kutafuta pesa. We have no time for God because we are busy looking for money. Hatuna wakati wa Mungu kwa sababu ya kutafuta pesa. Now let me ask you. Wacha niwaulize. Now that you are busy going to Kamukunji and picking uh, they are not called hardware. They the things for the kitchen they are called whatware. Kitchenware. Picking kitchenware. To sell. Naenda kutafuta vyombo vya jikoni kuuza. And you're too busy selling kettles and selling cups and plates. Unauza birika, vikombe na sahani. I'm picking those ones because I know there's nobody who sells them in church. Na zungumzia hizo kwa sababu najua hakuna mtu anauza kanisani. Now if you're that busy. Na sasa una hizo shughuli. What will happen the day you will start going to China? Nini itafanyika wakati utaanza kwenda Uchina? When you will start importing containers. Wakati utaanza kuleta makontainers. Full of those kitchen wares. Ambazo zimejazwa hizo vyombo. Will you even ever pray? Je, utaomba? The one I told you you pray doing this so that Mungu akusamehe akuhurumie. Ile ni waonyesha aliye anayeomba kwa ishara ili asamehe. Even do that. Je, utafanya hata hivyo? Now that you're too busy. Na sasa kwamba una shughuli nyingi. And you know being busy here is being making yourself a busy body because I can tell you the truth most of us are not too busy to afford time. It is only that we don't want to create time for God. Ni kwamba hatutaki kupatia Mungu wakati. It is not that we are too busy. Sio kwa sababu tuna shughuli nyingi. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Let me use Sam because he's the one who will not take offense. You know Wacha nitumie Sam. Sam is the only one who can not take me anywhere. Aizi nipeleka mahali popote. Your son can never take you to court. Mwana wako aweze akakupeleka kotini. Sam goes for work. Sam anaenda kazini. He finishes work at 5 o'clock. Anamaliza kazi saa na moja. And he knows it is Wednesday. Anajua ni Jumatano. Instead of making himself busy to come running to church. Badala ya kuja upesi kanisani. He spends 20 minutes saying goodbye to his workmate. Anachukua dakika ishirini kwa salimu wafanyikazi. Ili time time ishaishe ili wakati uishe and then instead of taking a motorbike to come home he decides to walk from Kasarani so that by the time he's getting to Gedurai it is 6:30 badala ya kuchukua pikipiki anatembea ili afikapo hapa that nisa. gives him enough reason to miss fellowship hiyo inampa sababu ya kukosa ushirika praise the name of jesus jina la yesu by the time he gets to Gedurai he convinces himself i'm too tired wakati anafika Gedurai ana After all, nimeshinda kwa roof nikiweka stima. Nimeshinda nikiweka stima. And you know when he used to have no job he kept on telling me to pray for him to get a job. Wakati hakuwa na kazi alikuwa anasema Now that he has gotten a job he's too tired to come to church. Sasa jo amepata kazi I hope you know we are talking about you not Sam. Natumainia nazungumzia wewe sio Sam. Mnanielewa? I'm using Sam but I'm talking about you not him. Natumia Sam kama mfano tu. You kept on telling me pasi niombe nipate kazi. 
Kwa hiyo nasema niombeni pata kazi. Tukakuitania mbinguni. Kaita mbinguni. We prayed. Tukaomba. You, you even made a vow God when you give me a job I will serve you faithfully. Ukatoa kiapo hmm? ukinipa kazi nitakutumikia kwa uaminifu. Now faithfully is to spending 20 times saying goodbye to people. Je, uaminifu ni kusalimu watu dakika 20. Faithfully is spending 20 times taking tea in the office because your boss has just enticed you with a cup of tea. Ni kuchukua dakika 20 kunywa chai ya yule tajiri. Instead of tajiri. running to church for revival. Badala ya kukimbia kansani kwa ufufuo. By the time unafika githuri unabi, ah, pasi ni mechelewa. It is 6.45 and the fellowship is ending, I mean, and the revival is ending at 8. Unaenda yes. kwa nyumba. Una saa 12 na na, na na ushirika unaisha saa 2 unaenda nyumbani. Because some of those things that God has given us have become our idols. Sababu vitu ambavyo Mungu ametupa vimekuwa sanamu kwetu. Let me use Joyce. Wacha nitumie Joyce. Joyce again can never take me anywhere. Kwa sababu hawezi nipeleka popote. You are a girl. Wewe ni mkuu msichana. Ulitusumbua kwa kanisa. Tukuombe upate bwana. The day you got married. Siku ambayo uliolewa. Now you have no business with church. Hauna shughuli na kanisa. The only business you have is to entertain your husband. Kazi ambayo iko nayo ni kuketi na mume wako. You no longer come to church. Haukuji kanisani. You come to church late. Na kuja umechelewa. You miss Wednesday fellowship. Nakosa ushirika wa Jumatano. You can't come for revival because you're busy cooking for your husband. Uwezi kuja kwa ufuo kwa sababu unapikia mume wako. As if you're the first one to ever get married. Ni kama wewe ndiye wa kwanza kuwa kwa ndoa. As if all these other women here don't have a husband to cook for. Ni kama hao wengine hawana mume wa kumpikia. So you no, no longer come to fellowship because kwa, you're cooking for your husband? Kwa hivyo hukuji ushirika kwa sababu ya kupikia mume wako. You cannot come to Kesha because you have a husband? Hauwezi kuja Kesha kwa sababu una mume. And then you tell us to pray for you to get a baby. Atuambia tukuombe upate mtoto. And the moment you get a baby. Wakati unapata mtoto. Then you start giving us excuses. Unatupa viji sababu. Now I am too old. Na sasa nimezeeka. Let the young people serve. Wacha wa, because wachanga I am washi. suckling my baby. Kwa sababu na nyonyesha mtoto. You can't even come to church because you have a baby. Hawezi kuja kanisani kwa sababu ya mtoto. You can no longer come to fellowship because you have a baby. Hawezi kuja kwa ushirika kwa sababu now, ya mtoto. Now let me ask you. Wacha na waulize. Is that baby supposed to be a blessing or a demon? I'm sorry, this is hard gospel. But is that baby supposed to be a demon or a blessing? And when you had no baby, you used to lie down here. Seeking the face of God. You were busy singing. Ulikuwa unaimba. Koro wajigwa. Uweka na fafa. Uweka he. Kago shokeria. Na mielie tada tu kuma rilia gashi ya liwa. Ona daga tiri gake nyaka ni za. Six months. Ah, mezi sita. Have you returned the baby to God? Jeo merudisha mtoto kwa mungu. Praise the name of Jesus. Ah, jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Because we have taken some of the blessings God has given us and made them our idols. We no longer take pleasure in serving God. Can we go back? Before you got that job, but aba kabla ya kupata hiyo kazi very faithful asha very faithful asha ulikuwa shamanzi mwaminifu you were here before anybody else Uli, in church ulikuwa, in the morning ulikuwa hapa mapema asubuhi now that you got the job na sasa kwamba umepata kazi you had the luxury of sleeping a little more on sunday una yeah? furahia kulala kidogo jumapili because if you are like lilian Ikiwa kama we ni kama Lilian, you have to wake up early in the morning lazima uamke mapema and subui, get home at 9 o'clock in the night. Na ufike saa so the only time you can extend a little sleep wakati unaweza ukaongeza usingizi is Sunday morning. Ni Jumapili asubuhi. So on Sunday unalala mpaka saa 3. Sunday unalala mpaka juma saa 3. So you come to church at 11. Na kuja kanisani saa 5. You even now excuse yourself from pastor. Utatoa sababu kwa mchungaji. But pastor I can't make to continue serving. Kwamba siwezi nikaendelea kutumika. Why? Because I'm getting too tired. Kwa sababu nachoka. 
Tell your neighbor, redig your well. Wambie jirani yako ah, ah, chimbua visima. Tell your neighbor, redig your well. Wambie jirani yako chimbua visima. So I'm left wondering, do I pray that God takes away that job now so that you can go back? Je, na shangaa niombe mungu atoi ile kazi ili urudi. I'm wondering, do I pray that God makes that business broke and it closes down so that you're available for God? Na, na shangaa niombe yo biashara ifungwe ili upatikane kwa mungu. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu lisifiwe. Tunaichimbua tuna visima tena. Tunachimbua visima we tena. We must be there. Lazima uwe pale. Do you remember the way you used to call people and write SMSs to them and find out how they are doing? <laughs> what happened, brother Sam? Nini lifanyika ndugu Sam? You no longer care. Haujalishi tena. Huh? You say everybody for himself, God for us? Nasema kila mtu kivyake, Mungu wetu wote. Can we go back to those things? Turejele zile siku. Stand up on your feet. Tusimame. I'm sorry. This this is not a good message. It's not a good message to even put online. Samahani huu si ujumbe nzuri hata kuweka kwenye mtandao. This is what makes you become. Lakini ujumbe kama huo ndio unakufanya uwe. Eh, tutoe online.